But, um, you know, this man of God here, um, I was blessed to meet him. It's so funny when I met, it actually was his wife who gave me a call and then asked me about stuff. And I was kind of like, uh, she said, are y'all like a, are y'all like a church? And then I said, what's your definition of church? And then she just stopped like, what? What kind of question is that? <laughs> but I, but I had to be, I'm led by the spirit. I said, yeah, no, seriously, what is your definition? And she goes, I mean, like, do you guys meet up and stuff? And I told her, look, this ministry is not about a revolving door. Like many of you guys heard, it's not a revolving door, door of membership. It's about discipleship. It's about really following God all the way. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like, hey, I show up here, show up there. I'm good. It's like, no, God, we are the church. You understand? You live this thing out every waking moment of your life. And some of y'all heard this before and it's just like, oh, yeah, we know, Pastor. But some of y'all haven't. And when I spoke to her, she all kind. She was like, hey, this dude talking about stuff. I ain't never heard someone come at me like that. She said, you got to meet my husband. And he blurred. He, usually when people say that, they don't, they don't ever call back. <laughs> but her husband, Daniel, he called back so quick. I was just like, man, I didn't even get to eat like my bowl of Fruit Loops or whatever. So I was just like, you know, I guess the Lord is working on him. And then we end up meeting each other. Because I was just like, man, a lot of times you meet people over the house. And so trust me, they be thinking like, I'll be like the nicest dude. That took, that took a minute to just shoot my address to y'all. Y'all going to keep it up. Because I usually be like, uh, let's meet at the Starbucks for first before like, you know, I think y'all crazy or something. Find out y'all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs or whatever. And then vice versa. And we met up at Chick-fil-A, right? And then he saw me. He was just like, ooh. <laughs> he thought I was, he thought I was, uh, yeah, I ain't going to say it. Yeah, you, thought I, you thought I was not black, right? <laughs> he was just like, what happened? He's just like, you sure you, Jay? No. Nah. But it was beautiful afterwards. They got the true gospel and God has been working on them. And I see so many special things happening in their life. I know the Lord is going to use you in great ways. This is just like stepping stones to many others. All right. You know that I see I see so much with your family and um, I see that God is going to use you in a uh, in an awesome way. So uh, I want everybody to uh, praise the Lord for brother Daniel. He's going to come forward. In his own way, amen. You still want to use that? Take it off. Yeah, it got hot. That's why it's got hot. Yeah. You going backflips? No. I used to back in the day when I played soccer. Yeah. All right, first up. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, as, as he introduced me, my name is Daniel, and my beautiful family back there. I got my brother who showed up. Thank God. Um. I just want to start uh, with a quick prayer, you know. Uh, let's get started. Let's bow our heads and look to the Lord. Father, we give you thanks today for this opportunity that you have us here together to gather. Father, we just pray right now that your will be done on this afternoon, Lord. Anything you want to speak to their people, Lord, I pray that you're able to use me. And I pray that the people here, Lord, that they have open ears to hear and a heart of flesh, Lord, to be able to absorb what is being said. And Lord, we just ask that that you just give us each a little piece of what we need to hear tonight, Lord. Work in us, and in Jesus' name, we give you honor and glory. Amen. Amen. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about John 15. And in that, in that part of Scripture, it's talking about the grapevine. You know, it's saying, Jesus is actually speaking here. He says, I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. The Lord was speaking to me this past week as I was preparing my message and he really wants us to take hold of that uh, illustration of a grapevine as you guys know plants are connected to the roots and that's where everything gets their nutrients their water that's basically how they survive 
And if any part of a leaf falls off or any one comes and damages a, a branch, that branch will not grow as strong as it would if it was connected directly to the plant itself. Jesus was talking to me and saying that the people nowadays are going to church and they're stepping in. They're there for a week, two weeks, and then they go out for another week and a half and they're back again. When he's saying you need to be in me, remain in me and I in you, he means that we need to be seeking him diligently throughout the week, not just on a Sunday message. This is a, a process that, that takes sacrifice from our own beings because, yes, we are people. We do work. We have school sometimes. We have families, you know, different things that take up our time. How much time are we putting in with the Lord, though, on a, weekly, on a daily basis? You know, I can expand it to the weekly basis. It's not that much, if I'm being honest in myself, you know. Um, and part of that... I got something from Romans where it talks about do not copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The world is a big distraction here on earth. Why? Because we live in it. We don't live in heaven yet. But we're here on earth. We have bills. We have problems that occur. Flat tires here and there. For me, it was a battery going out. Thank God I got it fixed. <laughs> got a new battery. Hallelujah. But just like that, things happen on this earth that take up our time, take up our energy, and distract us from what we need to be doing with God. We need to be focused on God as much as we can, staying in prayer and seeking Him. It's not about when you go to sleep, you give 20, 30 minutes to read one chapter and pray a good night prayer. That's a great beginning, but it's not so much food that you need for your soul. It's like an appetizer. It's not something that's going to sustain you to keep growing and developing as God wants to use you. We have to be able to submit to God's will, being able to hear what He wants us to do. And that does include seeking Him daily. The more you seek with Him, you have a relationship with our Creator. And that's what this is about, having a relationship with our Creator. He's not just there in the clouds looking at you, seeing what you're doing, and just checking in every once in a while. He wants you to phone Him. It's 5 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, yes. 6 at night, right before you go to bed. As much as you can, He wants to hear from you. Why? Because He created us. He calls us His children. Isn't that a blessing that we're a children of the Most High God? Me, I'm proud to be a son of my parents, but it brings me even more joy than that to be a son of God. And that comes to my next point where when we walk with Christ, it's going to be challenging with our friends and family, our co-workers. They don't have the same mindset that we do as being new creations in Christ. My encouragement to you guys is to not pay so much attention to what is being said on the outside, but hear what is being said in your spirit. God will, re uh, will affirm that you're doing the right thing. It might be difficult getting looked at, side comments here and there, but in the end, it's not even about that. Our gratification comes from meeting Jesus up in heaven and Him being able to tell us, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. So I want to encourage you guys all today to just, you know, spend a little more time with God and to, you know, be able to listen, not just pray and be done with it, but pray and take a second to listen. See what he says back to you, because the more you do it, the more he's going to talk back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There you go. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah.